Good morning children and welcome to this class which is grammar and vocabulary. To start with we're going to read the vocab words and then you're going to say them to make sure that you know how. To help me with this I have Sean Ceratops who has joined me in the class and is going to practice saying the words with you. The first word is speciality. A speciality is something you are particularly good at or known for or a room with a specific purpose. So, I could say, making cakes is Jack's speciality. Okay? And so, uh, Sean is, <laughs> Sean's Eratops, uh, if you can have a go. Speciality. Sean Ceratops, that, that's, that, that's nothing like the word, Sean Ceratops. You'll have to practice more, right? And word number two, disturbing. Disturbing. To disturb is to either interrupt you when you're doing something, or annoy you when you're doing some work, or it's a kind of a bit peculiar or weird. So, for example, if Jack was trying to write his homework and his sister was singing a song, she would be disturbing him. And in the same way, if Jack was sleeping late at night and he heard somebody gently whispering a song, that would also be a bit disturbing. Okay, and uh, Sean Ceratops. Disturbing. Okay, uh, at least you tried, I suppose. And the next word is shifted. Shifted. Here, shifted means move a little bit. So if, for example, somebody shifted your eraser, they would have moved it a little bit. And quick, Sean Ceratops, you can say it along with him if you want. Sean Ceratops, go. Shifted. Okay, I, I could be worse, I suppose, could be worse. Um, the next word is numb. Numb. Numb is where you get very cold and you cannot really feel your fingers or your face. Um, here, like, if it's snowy and then you touch your, your hand and you cannot feel yourself touching it, your hands will be numb. Okay, Sean Ceratops. Numb. Oh, yeah, pretty good, pretty good. Next word is staggered. Staggered. Well, when you stagger, then you're kind of walking slowly and a little bit unstably because maybe you're carrying a big box or some kind of massive chair and then you can't really hold on to it. Okay, time for you and Sean Ceratops to try speaking. Are you ready? And go! Stuck, 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 Not really, Sean Ceratops, but, but, but okay. I mean, um, I'm sure the other children are doing a better job than you. Next word is collapse. Collapse. To collapse is to, is to fall down whilst broken, but generally it's to fall down quite quickly. So, for example, if you had a, a building that you'd blown up, it would collapse because it would just fall straight down. Whereas if you had a building that was getting old and slowly falling down, you wouldn't say collapse, you might maybe say fall apart. Okay, and we're going to go for Sean Ceratops. Sean Ceratops, go! Collapsed. All right, not bad, Sean Ceratops. Next word we have is squishing. If you remember from our story, Jack gets squished by a boulder. And in the same way, squishing just means crushed flat, like crushing something flat like a pancake. And are you guys ready to say the word along with Sean Ceratops? And go. Squashing. Yeah, good. Ace. And my next word then is struggled. Struggled. 
to struggle is just to fight against something. So, for example, if you were Nelson and Jessie had sat on you because she was mad with you, you would fight against her while she pushed you down. This is to struggle. Struggle can also mean find something difficult. So, if you struggle with math, it just means you, you, you find math difficult. It's like you're, you're fighting against mathematics and mathematics is winning. So, Sean Ceratops, quickly then. Struggled! Okay, yeah, good times. And the penultimate word is wobbled. Wobbled just means to, to move back and forth like this a little bit. Generally, it means that you're about to fall over. So, for example, if Vito had gotten his bat and he bashed Oliver on the head. Oliver might wobble a little bit before falling over. Okay, you and Sean Ceratops should now try to say the word. Are you ready, students at home and Sean Ceratops? And go! Wobbled. Okay, pretty good by Sean Ceratops there. I'm not sure if Charlene quite got that right. So, Charlene, just say it again. We should be okay. Next word is interrupted. Interrupted. Now, rupt here is the root word meaning to, to burst. But interrupt is to kind of burst into someone's conversation. So somebody is talking and then you cut into the middle of their conversation to, to interrupt. Hey, for the last time then, if you can say interrupt. And Sean Ceratops interrupted great fantastic now we're going to move on to our grammar so today for grammar we're talking about a sentence now sentence is a complete thought it starts with a capital letter and ends with a period or a comma you could use a comma No, Yendenosaurus, uh, you, you, you can't use a comma. You, you can't just put commas instead of periods. Just use a period at the end of your sentence, all right? So, a sentence must have a subject. Oh, teacher, teacher, like math or science, teacher. No, no. Not, not like math and science. That, that, that's a different kind of subject. Also, you're not even a real dinosaur. You're a Pokemon. No. Uh, a subject is a personal thing that takes an action. So, if we were to say, Oliverpus shoots the teacher, then the subject in that sentence is Oliverpus. And the predicate is shoot. Here, Oliver's subject and shoot is the predicate. No, Oliver Puss, I, I won't read it. I won't. <sighs> Oliver Puss is the best student. He is so well behaved and cute. Thank you for being my student, Oliver Puss. You are amazing. So, if we have an example of a subject. I, Jack, the man, the green door. Oh, good, uh, Sean Ceratops. That is a, a good example of a subject. Excellent. Or math, science, or geography. No, no. Not only are those not subjects. I mean, they are subjects, but but, but they're not. They're, they're not subjects we're talking about. But well, somebody's already said that. I make sure you're listening in class, please. Okay. The complete predicate, K, 
comes after the subject. So we have a subject and we have our predicate. The subject, the thing taking the action. The predicate is the action being taken. So, in the sentence, crazy Oliver Puss dances with the dinosaur as he sings a song. Oh, dinosaur, never dance before, but let's dance some more, my little dinosaur. The subject is Oliver Puss, and the predicate is dances. So, the complete subject is crazy Oliver Puss, and the complete predicate is dances with the dinosaur as he sings the song. So, in the other sentence, funny Jamie eats the sandwich under the table. The simple subject is... The, the simple subject is Jamie. Yes, Tyrannosaurus, that, that's right, that is the simple subject. Excellent. And the simple predicate? Simple predicate is eats the sandwich under the table. Pretty close, Yenyanosaurus, uh, Tyrannosaurus. Not quite. Here is the, the, the simple predicate is eats. The complete predicate is eats the sandwich under the table. Okay, so, to sum up very quickly, subject is the personal thing that takes the action. So in the subject, I eat cake, the subject is I. Predicate is the action which is being taken, so I eat cake, the predicate is eat. If I say, the excited fat man eats the delicious cake, then the simple subject is man, and the simple predicate is eats. But the complete subject is the excited fat man, and the complete predicate is eats the delicious cake. Okay, I'll put a quiz about this so that you can be quizzed.